Every day, for 60 years, someone has patrolled the world's last Cold War frontier. Today, it's Lieutenant Yu Hak Ju, 24 years old and a keen marathon runner, with a love of football and a girlfriend who worries back home. The small stretch of border he defends lies at the western end of the DMZ, where the landscape is bleak, the facilities rudimentary, and the temperature today below minus 20. Twice a day, Lieutenant Yu and his men walk the armistice line drawn by the United Nations 60 years ago, checking for any signs of disturbance in South Korea's perimeter fence. Their old enemy, North Korea, just two kilometers away on the other side. In between, watched over by guard towers, a buffer zone packed with landmines, and dotted around the southern side of the minefield, telephones for stray defectors to call across for help. The army wouldn't tell us when someone last called. It takes a good deal of calories to survive the cold. Lucky that one of the conscripts here is a trainee chef. South Korea's incoming president has talked of reducing the obligatory national service, but with the birth rate declining, some worry it'll leave the country vulnerable. In a frontline position like this, it's less about the hierarchy and more about a sense of brotherhood. We eat, sleep and serve together. It's high stress, but I try to lead my men so that we do our duty. Right up by the border, Lieutenant Yu and his men practice live fire exercises. The new generation of conscripts has already been tarred by military veterans as too soft and too cautious. One soldier here told me he gets scared at night listening to gunfire from the north. For the soldiers here, two kilometers away, North Korea can seem especially threatening. This frontier is scattered with sites of old battles and the last military conflict between the north and the south was just two years ago. But in his New Year's address this year, the North Korean leader talked about ending confrontation with the south. And with South Korea, China and Japan all starting this year with new leaders, many people are hoping there's a chance for a political thaw. Since then, North Korea has defied the UN and said it will press ahead with a third nuclear test. A sobering thought for the evening patrols as they collect their nightly ammunition. If this relic of the Cold War ever turns hot again, this handful of conscripts will be facing a very different kind of conflict to the one their grandfathers fought. Lucy Williamson, BBC News, Seoul.